Last week on Chain in the Valley, we sat down with Piernova's CEO, Gangesh Ganesan, to discuss his blockchain journey, recent industry news, Piernova's future, and more. This week, we're talking security. And no, not your favorite celebrity bodyguard. So let's get started. You are listening to Pier Nova's Chain in the Valley, where we discuss all things blockchain and DLT over our morning coffee. Here are your hosts, Sonia and Navid. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chain in the Valley. How are you, Sonia? Hello, everyone. I'm good. Uh, I feel like we're doing this every day now. I know. <laughs> 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 well, that's good, right? That means we're... Uh, have listeners. We have listeners. Um, but uh, let's get right into it. Finally, this is the week before Cybos. Dun, dun, Exciting dun. stuff. So I just want to let our uh, listeners know that, as I mentioned in the previous show, we will be at Cybos in London it's beginning on Monday. We happen to be on booth uh, in booth 32A. So if you're there, by all means, come say hi. I will be there. Um, we're also going to try our best to record uh, an episode or two of Chain of Valley there. Um, goal is to kind of talk to some folks that are already coming in and um, and go from there. So it should be exciting. Yeah. And we are doing demos at 1030 and 130. So but still come by and see us regardless of the time. And you could possibly win some AirPods. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So we have a raffle. Uh, so if you want to stop by, drop a card in. Um, we are going to make the first announcement on Tuesday afternoon and the second announcement on Thursday afternoon. Yep. So the, all these details, by the way, are on our website. So please visit piernova.com forward slash events. And you'll see the Cybos event listed on that page and you'll find all kinds of details. We have a, a built in calendar there. So if you want to set a, a specific time with us to come by, by all means, uh, let us know. But enough about that. Tell us why I feel so secure today. <laughs> Wait, that's a horrible joke. Oh, wow. But go dad on. joke, dad joke. This week, we actually have Suhail Mazahiri here with us. He is Pure Nova's security engineer. So thank you so much for being here, Suhail. Thank you. Glad to be here. So to start off every episode, we usually ask our guests to give us a little bit of background as well as what sparked your interest specifically in security. Sure. Uh, well, since I was a kid, I have always been fascinated with cybersecurity domain and how a hacker could possibly gain an access to a system. Uh, reading and studying about these things satisfy my curiosity, while at the same time give me an opportunity to learn more about it. Uh, four years ago, I joined FireEye, which is one of the biggest cybersecurity company. That's where I was exposed to some great technologies and very smart people. Uh, it fueled my passion and I had a chance to learn uh, a lot from them. And you transitioned into Pier Nova about a little over a year ago. Uh, two years ago. Two yeah. years ago, sorry. A little over two years ago. And um, you've sort of led our security um, efforts. Correct. Yeah, I'm leading the security effort of our Kiniform platforms, and I'm uh, proud to be part of the team. Perfect. So, so for someone who doesn't know that much about security, him, me, um, what can you tell us in terms of an intro to the high level security landscape? So, uh, as you may know, cyber, uh, cybersecurity domain is very broad. So, if we want to look at it from a very high level, we may uh, categorize it into a big area. The first one is triple uh, A, and the second one is encryption. Uh, I try my best to explain each of them in high level. And uh, let's start with the AAA. And of course, it's not the uh, AAA insurance one. <laughs> I thought, I, <laughs> I, I, what, are you, you're, you're just breaking my security blanket now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so let, let me let me let me ask you, uh, just so that everybody understands what the the three A's are. Let's go with the first one. What's the first A? Yeah. So the first A is authentication, and uh, it's uh, about identifying a user. The goal is uh, we are trying to figure out whether it's Sohel, it's Navid, or Sonia, right? Uh, there are different mechanisms to do that. Sometimes you simply use your username and password. Sometimes you use a badge. Sometimes you use biometric authentication, like your fingerprints. But uh, it's all about who, and uh, we are trying to identify a user. Perfect. So now you know who I am. 
What's the next step? The second piece of AAA is uh, authorization. Uh, we authenticate the user, and now we are trying to determine the user has the authority to do what. Uh, can Sohel access that room? Can Sohel uh, delete that file? Can Sohel grant access to another person? So the first piece was about who, the second piece is about what. Perfect. So that seems to me that like that covers it, but there's yet another A. What's that? Right. <laughs> the last piece of AAA is accounting or auditing. Basically, we are trying to measure uh, the resources the user consume and basically track every interaction of the user across the system. That includes things like logging, analyzing those logs, and more. Perfect. So would something like a password fall under authorization then, if someone has a password? Uh, that would be... Uh, or more authentication? Uh, well, we are uh, username and password would be an authentication method, like the username and password would be one of the authentication methods, and yes. Okay. So when we talk about user groups, for example, um, that is the um, sort of uh, the piece that falls into authorization, correct? correct? So you can you can say you know any user with these characteristics has certain access permission and all that stuff, right? Correct. But it's never that simple, is it? Right. So well, there is when we are talking about authorization. Remember, we are trying to determine uh, uh, the user has the authority to do what, and there are different models for that authorization. For example, there is a role-based access control model uh, or known as RBAC. So basically uh, the way that we are trying to describe the access to the system is through groups and roles as you mentioned. There are uh, different uh, models as well, uh, things like attribute-based access control model uh, and uh, much more. So I want to ask you um, about, you know, a lot of times and, you know, feel free to, to tell us what your opinion on all of this stuff is, right? A lot of times in the news you hear a company gets uh, hacked or something like that. In your mind, out of the three A's you mentioned, authentication, authorization, and accounting, which one is the hardest one to, um, I guess, keep an eye on so that things don't uh, become exposed? Well, the truth is cybersecurity, like I said, is very broad domain. and. Uh, each of these bridge happen, can happen from uh, either of these. All you need is uh, the weakest chain in part of this, and it doesn't matter which part of this AAA it, that happens. Uh, for example, sometimes the authentication method that they are using is a weak authentication method. Uh, another time, the authorization model that they are using is uh, uh, has a, a vulnerability and is not uh, 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 complete enough. Or sometimes in the accounting pieces, the log contains some sensitive information, so uh, the bad actors uh, take advantage of it and extract useful sensitive information out of it. So the analogy would be like a tire. There's a single point of failure somewhere, but it could really be anywhere. And, it, and so, uh, I, and I know I'm going to butcher this saying, but I'm sure you know it better than I do. There's a saying that says security is always uh, what is excessive until something breaks, right? Something Correct. along those lines, yes, right? Yes, that's true. It's and, always excessive until it's not enough. That's right. I forget who said that, but that's... Uh, uh, it's the uh, security lead of... Uh, uh, I forgot the name of the company. It's a, oh, uh, it's a power company in Australia. Got it. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So, and that's really true, right? That you could, you could, you know, and this is, we talk about managing expectations around blockchain. And I think the same probably would apply in security as well, that you could have the latest software, all the patches are in place. You have the right accounting, you have the right authorization. And yet there's no such thing as foolproof, right? That's correct. Yes. So all the bad actors need is just a, a weak point, and that can be anywhere in the system. And that's all it takes to, uh, for them to take advantage of it. So all we've talked about so far is sort of the, the gateway and the walls, right? So tell me now about what do we do with data in order to make sure that our data is secure? Correct. So, like I said, like at the beginning, if you want to look at the high-level security landscape, uh, the first piece was the triple A that we discussed. The second piece is encryption, which kind of lead to what you ask. So, uh, uh, if you want to look at the encryption, uh, we have to understand the data and the state of the data. Uh, in high level, data has three states. The first state is uh, at rest, which the data is inactive and uh, it's stored physically in any digital form, let's say your flash uh, uh, drives or your hard drive of your uh, laptop. Not your notebook, Sonia. 
Just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> He's making fun of me because I'm old school. I still write in a notebook. <laughs> Sorry. The second piece of that is in, in transit. Basically, data in transit uh, or data in motion is uh, uh, the data actively moving from uh, one location to another location, such as across the internet or through a private network. Let's say you send an email and the content of the email going across the wire and uh, to reach the other person. And the last piece of uh, uh, the, the state of the data is in use. So mm -hmm. basically the data uh, is active data and it's in uh, memory of the computer or CPU cache or CPU registry and it's ready to be processed. So corresponding to each of these three state of the data, uh, we have encryptions. We have encryption at rest, whose concern is what if someone steal that hard drives and whether or not they can start extracting the data. We have encryption in transit, whose concern is about what if someone is eavesdropping uh, the communication channel between two endpoints. And we have encryption in use, which is a very interesting uh, area. Uh, basically, what if the, uh, the system who does the computation itself is untrusted? Things like homomorphic encryption and so on. Typically, when we say encryption, we're talking about um, data that is either at rest or it's in transit. And we forget that it could also be in active use, which could, again, open up, uh, I guess, a can of worms, right? Correct. The, the, the scope for uh, a data in use and therefore encryption in use uh, is very interesting area. It's things like homomorphic encryption. Basically, we are talking about can we do any computation on a encrypted data, on a cipher text? And if you think about it, it's very interesting uh, because uh, when something is in a cipher text is encrypted, uh, you can't extract meaning out of it, right? It's encrypted. So you for the first natural piece is you have to decrypt it to be able to see what is that data, whether it's number two or number four, then be able to do some oper operation on that. However, the encryption in this area is very interesting uh, area because uh, there are some mechanisms, like I said, the homomorphic encryption that uh, you can do some computation against ciphertext. That's that's amazing because you know you would think that you know I completely understand the concept of having to uh, secure a piece of data that's at rest or a piece of data that's in transit. But if you're going to have to do computations on a piece of data, um, how do you do that when you can't do it unless it's visible, right, or readable? Correct. That's that's pretty clever. So. So we just talked a lot about encryption. So I'm wondering if we can get into the difference between encryption and maybe hashing, and then also people have heard the term encoding as well. Yeah. So well, that that's the area that uh, is uh, some people uh, uh, that that's the area that is not on, uh, people get confused. Mm -hmm. And let me start with the encoding. Uh, basically, encoding is the process of converting data from one form to another form. Uh, as an example, now that we are talking, uh, there is a thought in my mind that I'm encoding that thought, that thinking uh, to uh, English and uh, I'm passing that to you and you're hearing it and then you're translating uh, to uh, uh, signals in your mind and you're interpreting it. Basically, I'm encoding my thought in English. The in encoding that I'm using is English words and uh, uh, you are decoding it the other side as well. So in encoding, the, uh, the whole purpose is to maintain data usability and can be reversed by employing the same algorithm that uh, uh, encoded the content. In this case, uh, English. There is a, a vocabulary and grammar that whoever learned, they can decode and in, uh, encode. Uh, and for encryption, it's completely uh, different stories. Basically, for encryption, uh, uh, encryptographic encryption is the process of encoding a message or information in such a way that only authorized people can access. And those who are not authorized, they cannot. So when we talk about encryption, we are, uh, there is definitely a key or keys, and it's a bidirectional operation. So uh, you can encrypt something, and whoever is authorized mm. and has access to the key can decrypt that piece of information. And the last piece that you mentioned is hashing. Uh, so when we're talking about the hashing, there is a hash function behind that. And uh, uh, a hash function is uh, any function that can be used to map uh, data of arbitrary size to a fixed value. So uh, basically what we're trying to do is a mapping of the data to another value, and it's one direction. Uh, so once you do that, technically you are not able to uh, come back and see what is the origin of the message. There is no key involved. 
So the purpose of the hashing is uh, completely different from encryption and encoding. It's the purpose is to validate the integri integrity of the content uh, by detecting all modification uh, of the, on the data. So I'm curious, how does someone choose which one that they would use? Or do you use all three of them? Yeah, uh, well, different. Okay. they are different. They are there to address different things. Right. Uh, you use encoding when you want to change the form of the message. Uh, let's say when you want to transfer some things, right? When you want to transfer something, uh, you have to convert uh, the form of the message to 0 and 1 and to electric uh, signals mm. to be able to uh, preserve the message. So you use encoding when the purpose is to maintain data usability. Right. You use encryption when it's about uh, when the confidentiality of the data is important for you. When you want to pass a piece of information, but you want to make sure only authorized individual has access to that. And of course, you use hashing when uh, uh, you want to uh, make sure about the integrity of the data, uh, when you want to validate the integrity of the data. So we, we use hashing, obviously, in blockchain quite often. And it, it we sometimes refer to it as the signature of uh, whatever we're looking at, some kind of a digital asset, right? Um, tell me, so we usually use SHA-256, for example, as the common function for hashing purposes. But there are other functions as well. Um, just without going too detail into this, uh, can you tell us just a little bit about um, you know, is there is there really a difference between say MD5 or SHA-256 or something like that, or is it just just different methodologies behind how you go about sort of hashing? Of course, yeah. A piece of data. So when you're talking about hashing, like I said, there is a hash function behind it, and. Uh, uh, there is a subcategory of hash functions uh, uh, that uh, hashing that we call it cryptographic hashings. Basically, cryptographic hashings are that sub uh, uh, category of hashing that uh, their hash functions has some unique properties which make them more secure for cryptographic purposes. Uh, SHA uh, is one of the cryptographic hash functions, and uh, uh, one of those properties that I mentioned is uh, uh, a collusion resistance. So. Uh, in cryptographic, it's a bad uh, properties uh, if you can map two different things to the same uh, output. So this is something that in cryptographic hash doesn't happen, and uh, the strength of cryptographic hash functions uh, comes to some of these properties. Uh, so to address your question, uh, uh, yes, there is a difference between these functions, uh, and some of them is good for uh, cryptographic operation and are slower intentionally and some of them are faster but are not as secure and they might have occlusion and other uh, properties. Right. So I, I just want to make sure whoever's listening to this is very clear that when we talk about encryption, it's, it's never meant to be a one-way street, meaning that you encrypt a piece of data, uh, but then you need to have the ability to turn it back and see what was there. But when it comes to uh, hashing, the point isn't that you are obfuscating that piece of data um, to store it or anything like that. It, that's That part is not a, that's not, it's not a secret. It's not really the purpose of it. The purpose of it is that if I gave you a file that had a certain a number of characters in it, a, a format or whatever, that generates a unique signature. Now, I can share that with you. And when you receive that file from me, you can run the same function on it. And you should absolutely arrive at the exact same signature. And so if if your signature and my signature no longer match, then you know that obviously that piece of file or whatever that I gave you has been altered. Right. Uh, I want to just add one piece. I want to be careful about the uh, terminology signature because it might be uh, misconfused with the uh, uh, digital signature. Basically, what you are talking about is the fingerprint, which the That's output right. of uh, fingerprint or digest, which is output of that uh, hash functions. Right, absolutely, and and you're right. A digital signature is is more on the you know what, for instance, DocuSign does. Correct. So digital signature is another uh, uh, another uh, uh, thing in cybersecurity and in uh, cryptographic, uh, which come which uh, has uh, different uh, cryptographic properties. It uh, includes things like uh, authenticity and uh, non repudiation, and non -repudiation Perfect. exactly, yeah. and integrity of the data. Right? Beautiful, and and so I think now. 
This is a, a, to me, this is such a timely topic uh, to begin with. But at the same time, I think it's such a, a fascinating topic and uh, pretty broad as well. Right? So um, I want to make sure that we have you on the podcast on a regular basis so that we can talk about these things. Um, we, I don't want to dive into the security aspects of our platform today because I think we've already talked a lot about um, the basics of, of all of these things. And I really appreciate you uh, kind of walking us through the basics of how these things work. Kineofarm has always been built with security in mind at every step. And, uh, you know, there, I, I try my best to always explain to folks that there's a certain inherent trust that comes with blockchain applications or blockchain type applications to begin with, but that's not security at all. Two weeks ago, we actually had one of your interns on, Ashwin. So if you've been listening to us out of order, shame on you, but you can go <laughs> back and um, listen to, he went over cryptography and a lot about encoding and encryption too. So take a listen to that but thank you so much for being here Glad this is a great here. episode and we'll talk to you soon hopefully i i want to hear more about prime numbers next time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's just such a fascinating area of mathematics and how it sort of plays a role but so hey, it's absolutely been a pleasure uh thank you so much for making time to sit down with us and uh please stay tuned for then part two of this episode uh coming to you hopefully within the next six weeks or so thank you so much and as always thanks for listening to chain in the valley where we discuss all things blockchain and DLT. Find us, love us, and rate us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and chaininthevalley.com. We appreciate all of our listeners, and to each of you, have a great week. And that's the way security... Not crumbles. Not crumbles. <laughs>